back in the days of Charles Darwin, relatively little was known about uh, the complexity, the enormous complexity of the microscopic world, the microscopic aspects of, of living organisms. Uh, there was a view that uh, in the 19th, uh, latter part of the 19th century that a living cell was essentially a featureless bag of enzymes, all kind of in, in true solution. Not much uh, in, in the way of uh, detailed uh, three-dimensional complexity. Um, but, of course, in the 20th century, we've made enormous strides in understanding that that's not the case at all. There is a, a very great degree of intricacy of architecture down in these cell units. So today, everybody understands uh, about bits and bytes, and so perhaps a useful illustration there of the uh, complexity, let's say, of the uh, DNA molecules might be helpful. You can calculate the number of bits contained in tightly packed um, uh, DNA material, let's say, that would fill one cubic millimeter of space, as equaling 1.9 times 10 to the 18th power bits. Now, that number is, by many orders of magnitude, vastly greater than the storage capacity of the largest uh, computing machines that we have, the uh, supercomputing machines. Their storage capacity per cubic millimeter is far less than the information storage capacity in the, uh, in the DNA molecule. Now, moreover, the DNA itself, as it functions in a living cell, has uh, about a hundred different proteins involved with just its own functioning. And uh, then you have these tens of thousands of other proteins in the rest of the, of the living uh, uh, cell also involved. So we have now a picture of immense submicroscopic complexity. And so it no longer is a reasonable proposition to think that simple chemical events could have any chance at all to generate the kind of complexity that we see in the very simplest living organism. So uh, we have not the slightest chance of a chemical evolutionary origin for even the simplest uh, of cells now with, uh, with the new knowledge that's accumulated in this century.